Hello everybody. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about the uh, the model that we use to describe mass transfer between phases. But before we talk about the model that we are going to uh, use or, or discuss in this video, we, we need to know first what is the mechanism of mass transfer between phases. So if I have a, a case like absorption or stripping where I have a species that is uh, transferring from a gas phase into a liquid phase in case of absorption or the other way from liquid phase to gas phase in case of liquid or, or, or stripping then uh, we we do have uh, a, a, like a very very clear difference in concentration between the gas phase and liquid phase uh, here and here so if we concentrate on the case of absorption then we will notice that the the or you you can you can just get it by by just intuition that uh, the 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 concentration at the bulk of the gas phase is the maximum and its minimum here so there should be a gradient of concentration between the maximum and the minimum so what happens is that the species will transfer from the bulk of the gas phase to the interface uh, which is the the surface uh, which is facing the liquid from one side and the gas from the other side which is the interface so this is the first step is to go from the bulk of the gas phase into this interface then from this side of the interface to the other side of the interface and then from the other side of the interface to the bulk of the gas film so these are the three um, main steps that the the species uh, pass through while or the molecule pass through while it's going from the bulk of the gas film or the gas phase to the bulk of the liquid phase um, and uh, this is this is um, kind of logical and it's it's fine and it's also applicable to any other mass transfer process so it, it's not necessarily for absorption and stripping and it's not necessarily for gas liquid uh, mass transfer processes it can be uh, valid for gas solid in case of absorption uh, liquid solid in absorption or desorption in case of liquid liquid in case of uh, gas uh, gas liquid and, and any other uh, any other cases so it's it's the same for any uh, mass transfer process between different phases so now let's talk about the model that we uh, we will use to describe this of course this is one of the models but this is a very famous model which is called the two film theory we have mentioned before the film theory in um, i think in uh, when we were discussing the case of unidirectional molecular diffusion and equimolar molecular diffusion and we mentioned this quickly uh, and um, it's it's very similar to the the um, the boundary layer theory as well uh, from the concept but the, the details are different of course but this is another model that assumes that the mass transfer uh, is taking place in a thin film uh, adjacent to the uh, the interface uh, from this side there is a gas film beyond this this film the the turbulence is high and the mixing is taking place uh, perfectly so we we have homogeneous partial pressure of a species a uh, or concentration anyways uh, beyond this this film and mass transfer starts uh, or, or the the change in concentration or partial pressure uh, changes or starts to to uh, the show up the gradient starts from here and ends here at the interface and then we have concentration at this side uh, the interface of in in case of uh, or on the, on the liquid side and then the gradient um, keeps uh, going until it reaches the end of the liquid film of thickness delta l and then the concentration is constant uh, on in in the bulk of the liquid phase so the the film uh, the, the the model assumes that this is the region where mass transfer takes place and beyond this uh, this these two films no mass transfer is taking place so this this is uh, the main idea of the film uh, of, the, of the theorem sorry so this is the first thing the second thing which is an important thing here is that uh, the 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 theory assumes that the film resistance is negligible so the partial pressure at the interface on the gas side of the interface is in equilibrium with the concentration in the liquid side of the interface um, and uh, this is this is very similar to what we do in case of um, heat transfer by convection uh, through uh, through uh, a conductive material uh, or in two phases uh, with a conductive material in between like the very famous case is the double pipe or shell and tube heat exchanger let's th let's say about the the double pipe if you have a double pipe and the the the, the pipe is uh, contains a, a material or, or a fluid inside and fluid outside and we choose the material of the pipe to be very very conductive thermally conductive so that it doesn't 
resist the uh, the heat transfer and when we we calculate the overall heat transfer coefficient we neglect the resistance of the pipe because it's very very conductive so the thermal resistance is very low of the pipe which is uh, which is equivalent to this interface in case of mass transfer here so uh, we neglect the resistance here which means that there is no uh, driving force because there is no resistance so there will be no driving force so these two uh, pressure and the concentration are in equilibrium so this is the theory that we are gonna be using and of course based on these assumptions all our calculations will deal with the resistance due to the gas film and the liquid film or the two films in the in the two um, in the two phases regardless what these two phases are and we we don't take this into account um, but before we go into the details of the calculations there is one important thing that i want to discuss uh, and i believe this is very very critical and important because this is going to be the basis of all what we are going to talk about later uh, and this is mainly the nomenclature or the uh, the symbols that we have and we need to to understand uh, well what these symbols represent or what they mean uh, because this is this is gonna be uh, used a lot in the rest of this chapter so uh, I'll take the case of gas absorption where we have a high concentration of species A in the gas phase and it's diffusing to the interface where we have here the partial pressure at the interface then the concentration at the interface on the other side and then the concentration in the liquid phase so it's it's very like very very similar to what we mentioned before but now uh, we we want to take uh, some time to uh, revise all these symbols. So I, I put this these two phases in two different colors I put these symbols here in the same color as the color of the liquid phase and these uh, symbols here with the same color of the gas phase um, And then now let's let's go with the with the same sequence we start here So I have here the concentration CAL is the concentration of the bulk of the liquid phase uh, and I can represent the concentration of the liquid phase with molar concentration or in um, in mole fraction which is xa so these two represent the same point here which is the bulk of the liquid phase now i have the interfacial concentration ca interface and xa interface the mole fraction and uh, i mean the molar uh, concentration and the mole fraction of species a at the interface uh, now moving to the uh, next phase or the other phase i have here partial pressure at the interface and the mole fraction at the interface we have here partial pressure at the bulk of the gas phase and y in the uh, or the mole fraction and the bulk of the gas phase so these these are all uh, like logical and known things but there are uh, four more parameters here that uh, i have uh, here in different colors i have here in different colors and here in different colors as well and these are uh, i i have here uh, they all have star and i have here two uh, two asterisks here here and here uh, and I'm, I'm giving a hint that these are imaginary parameters so just to understand why we have these parameters and and you you'd be surprised that I have in the liquid phase partial pressure and mole fraction in terms of y which I usually or I always use in 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 the gas phase so this these are imaginary parameters that we calculate or we uh, assume to be uh, like uh, available uh, so, so they, 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 again they are fictitious parameters they're imaginary parameters so I imagine that there is partial pressure in the liquid phase and the the, the, the reason of this is uh, what we mentioned before if you take a look at the liquid phase you will notice that this difference between CA interface and CA liquid is the liquid phase driving force and the, the PA minus PA interface is the gas phase driving force and we said we have a problem with dealing with these two um, two parameters the interfacial concentration and partial pressure and that's why we prefer to use the overall driving force which is this and we said before that this is not possible to do because I cannot sub subtract uh, partial pressure uh, or do the subtraction of partial pressure minus concentration so I have to unify the units and to unify the units I use these imaginary parameters so these are uh, not real parameters they are, as i said they are imaginary parameters there is not, nothing uh, uh, that, that's called partial pressure in, in in liquid phase there is no such a thing but we say that there is an imaginary partial pressure in the liquid phase which is equivalent to this concentration and i can use this instead of the concentration 
to describe the overall driving force. So this is the, the, the only reason I have this, is that this is the partial pressure that represents this concentration. Uh, and by having this uh, representing the concentration, I can now say that the overall driving force is PA minus PA star or CA star minus CAL. So this is, this is how I, or, or why I have these parameters. Uh, now the uh, and and again I can, I can say that this is y a minus y a star or x a star minus x a so this is this is why I have these parameters. Now comes the question: How can I calculate these parameters? I now understand why I have these parameters now, but how do I calculate these parameters? The the way I calculate these parameters is by uh, simple logic that this um, is a parameter that is equivalent to this, which means that. If, if I have I have partial pressure and these concentrations, we will not have any driving force because this and this are the same. So this and this have no driving force, which means that they are in equilibrium. So this partial pressure is in equilibrium with CAL. And this is what I say here, partial pressure in equilibrium with CAL. And this is the concentration in equilibrium with PA, um, PA here. Okay, so this is, this is, simply what I, I, I uh, or why I have these, these parameters is to be able to uh, go through this, this problem and, and get a solution of the problem of, of not being able to get the overall driving force. Now with these imaginary parameters, I can calculate the overall driving force. And, and given the information uh, that we usually know which are the, um, the the bulk concentration, the bulk partial pressure and the equilibrium relation. It's very, very simple to get PA star and CA star. If I know PA and I know the equilibrium relation, I would directly substitute in the equilibrium relation with PA to get CA star. And I can directly substitute in the equilibrium relation with CAL to get PA star. Um, now, there is one last thing that I want to highlight as well, which is uh, the difference between CA and CAL. In the gas phase, we can calculate the concentration, um, which is in case of which is number of moles per unit volume. It's valid for liquid and for for, for gas phase. Uh, and in case of ideal gas, C equals P over RT. So it's PA over RT. So I have it here as an extra uh, parameter here that's not there uh, because I can represent the the concentration, the gas phase using the concentration. Um, but 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 there is one important point as well. If I have the concentration here, it's not C A star. It's different. It is, uh, it's based on the gas phase. But this concentration is based on the liquid phase. So they are two different things. Uh, but but just to 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 keep in mind that this C A L, I put this L here to differentiate between the concentration in the gas phase and the concentration in the uh, liquid phase. So I hope this idea of having the overall driving force or the the imaginary parameters clear. Um, now, uh, if we want to uh, like start the, the, the application of this um, uh, film theory and we want to see what equations can I use based on the given information that I have, then I will start with uh, simply mass balance. I have this film where there is no resistance, so whatever is going in, in this film is going out of this film. So I, if I want to represent what is the flux in the gas phase, it's going to be kg multiplied by the driving force. In case of liquid phase, it is kl multiplied by the driving force. And um, if I combine both equations, they are going to be uh, kg multiplied by p minus p interface equals kl multiplied by c interface minus c liquid. And I can rearrange the equation to be written this way. Um, this is a straight line equation and uh, it has a slope of negative kl over kg. I'll talk about this in more details, but the reason I'm, I'm highlighting this or I'm referring to this is that because one method that we can use to uh, to solve the, the mass transfer between phases uh, or the problems that include mass transfer between phases is using a graphical solution, which is very, very common. We do this in many, many uh, processes like absorption, like distillation, stripping, in, in, in many, many other things. And liquid-liquid extraction, solid liquid extraction. The graphical solution is, is one of the most commonly used approaches of solving mass transfer processes. So in order to do this, we have to understand first what equations do we have and how we represent them in a graphical way. So 
usually when I have a mass transfer uh, a process, then we solve two types of equations. The, the mass balance equation, which is this equation, and the equilibrium relation, which I can represent as a curve or a straight, a straight line on the, um, on the graph. Uh, so this is why I put this as straight line because dealing with straight lines makes uh, life easier and, and makes the lines easier to draw. Um, we will go through this in more details later. I just wanted to uh, like refer to this quickly. And in the next video, I'm going to talk more about the straight, straight line relations, how to deal with them, because I know some students have issues with dealing with straight lines, although it seems like a piece of cake, but for, for many of the students, it doesn't. So I will go through this and then um, we will go through the, the solution of, of the, the, um, the, the equations together and seeing how we can uh, solve these problems, get um, the flux, get the interfacial concentrations, get any other information that I don't know. So um, yani this is end of this video and I'll see you in the next video, inshallah. Goodbye.